Good evening and welcome to True Doug Man Encounters. I'm your host, Marvin Allen. If you or anybody that you've known have had a sight or encounter and would like for me to share it on my channel, then please contact me. I would love to hear from you. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, as you all know, I just been busy um, gathering encounters and trying to get my live back up. But the one thing I'm going to stick with is doing these encounters because that's what I'm good at. Um, um, another uh, uh, another thing, I'm uh, um, I'm gonna try to go back out in the field real soon, again, you know. But I'm gonna just be real careful when I go out. Like I said, I don't I don't like to carry guns out there or nothing like that because I don't want these creatures to see me as a threat. So you gotta protect yourself, but. I don't think they just out there just to run down a person and attack them. You know, that's just my belief. I believe they just want to be left alone, you know. Um, and another thing, I will be trying to do more than one encounter a week, you know, to give y'all something to listen to. You know, sometimes I get lazy and don't feel like doing it. And that's not me because this is my passion and I love doing this. So I'm going to have to push myself to um, put out more than one encounter a week just to give y'all something to listen to. And um, hopefully I'll be starting my live back up soon. I don't know when, but I'll be starting it back up soon. Um, as you all know, anonymity means a lot to me, and I break that for no one. Now, this encounter I'm going to um, give you right here. It come from my eyewitness, and it was given to him by his father. So without further ado, let's jump right in to this encounter. Now, this encounter right here it happened in Alexandria Louisiana he didn't give me the exact spot you know but like I said I'm grateful that he gave me you know his father encounter now his father told him because his father used to go hunting and, you know, hiking and camping a lot. And he said his father was out, you know, hunting one day, you know, just walking, taking the trails that he usually take. And he said, as he was walking down this trail, he heard what sounded like footsteps walking about 20 yards to his left. So he looks and he scans the area left to the right, but he sees nothing. So he said his father told him that he continued to walk. He said, and as he was walking, he noticed that 
it had got real, real quiet. Something that he wasn't used to. Because he said he used to always hear some type of animal or insect. But he said it got real quiet. So he said he continued to walk. He said as he was walking, the trail he was on, it broke off. He said one went to the right, one went to the left, or he could even go straight. He said because he heard what sounded like footsteps to him, he took the left. So he continued to walk up because he took the left trail. And he said as he was walking, he heard something again. But he said it sounded like this time it was like something was ruffling or rustling in the bush. He said, because it was some bushes about 20 feet to his right as he was going up to his right. And he looked and he see the bushes moving. So he stopped. He's staying there. He aimed his rifle. And he was waiting to see what type of animal was going to come out of there. He said, but as he was looking and aiming his rifle, he seen the rear end of something. But he couldn't tell what type of animal it was. He seen a rear ears, rear end of something. So he aimed his rifle. Bow, he shot. He said, All you heard was running through that brush. And he waited until he didn't hear it no more. So he said he's going to track it because he know he wounded it. But at this time, he didn't know what he shot. So he continued to walk up this trail. As he walked up this trail, he followed where he shot this thing at. And as he was walking, he could see, you know, drops of blood. Not a lot, but he could see drops of blood as he was following this, um, you know, following the path of this thing. So he walks and he walks. He said he walked for about 30 to 40 minutes. And then this, the, the trail just stopped cold. It just stopped cold. So he stood there, you know, thinking, you know, where the, did this go at? So he says he turned around to go back because he was getting ready to leave. He said because it was getting, you know, kind of dark now. So as he's walking back down to get back on the trail that brought him in, he walking, he hears something again, but this time he hears what sounded like a growl. He turns around, rifle in hand, and he looks, he scans his perimeter. 
and he sees what looks like a dog, a canine. And he's looking at it. And he said to himself, it's an awful big dog. So he's looking at it. And this, you know, creature's looking at him. So he got his rifle in hand. He aims it at this dog creature. And when he did that, this thing stood up on his hand legs. And that's when he said, what the f is that? And he said, this thing growled again. And he said, this time it was much more powerful. He aimed his rifle at this creature. But he couldn't pull the trigger. Because he said this thing was so massive. He said this thing was just huge. The head on this thing, he said, didn't make it no sense. It looked at like four regular dog heads. That's how big this creature head was. But he still got his rifle in hand. So he starts to walk backwards down that trail. As he walking backwards down that trail, he hears something again. And it's too his left. He swings, he looks over that way. He sees another one of these creatures standing on his hind legs. So he continued to walk backwards. As he's walking backwards, these creatures starts to walk. One to his left and then the other one to his right. He's still walking back to get back on that trail. So he finally makes it down there to the trail. He gets on it. He starts to walk up forward. Now, mind you, he said this other creature was paralleling him, still walking to try to cut him off on that trail he took to go back up to get out. So he said he starts to walk fast. That's when he said that creature dropped down to all fours. And it began to run in his direction. He said he aims and he shoot. Boom! He said he know he hit it. He know he hit it because he seen it flinch. He said the creature stopped. He said when it stopped, it turned its head and looked over to where that bullet hit him at. And then he looked back at him and showed all his teeth. That's when this other creature begins to walk over there and it stopped about 10 feet from the creature that was down on all fours. 
He's still walking, gun in hand. Walking and keeping it on them. They just watched him. They watched him as he walks past. Goes up. He gets out, he leaves. When he get home, he calls a friend. Tell his friend. He said, man, I don't know what I shot or what I saw. But it's something I never seen in the woods. So his friend said, do you want me to go out there with you? He said, man, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, These these things look like werewolves or something or doves, but they they cut up like a like like a man is. So he told him that if he wanted him to go out there, he would. And that's when he said, okay. Two weeks later, he said his father told him that he went back. And he said when he went back to that area, he don't know what it was, but he got a funny feeling in his gut. Because he said as soon as he got there, it got dead quiet. Silent. He said he didn't go down to where he seen these creatures at. He said he walked in a little bit, and that's when he heard something running fast. And when he heard that, he turned around and he left. This is the encounters that was passed on to his son. And his son would later have his own encounter with these creatures. So I'm going to stop there, let y'all listen to that, and I'm going to get ready to upload another one so see you on the next true Doug man encounter let's get it